ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਬੰਜੀ ਡਸ ਹੈਵਨ ਐਂਡ ਹੈਲ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟ ਯਾ ਦੇ ਡੂ ਦ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਆਫ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਅਮ ਯਾ ਦ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਆਫ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਐਲਾਬੋਰੇਟ ਔਨ ਥੈਟ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਵਾਟਐਵਰ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਯਾ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਗੋ ਇਨਟੂ ਇਟ ਕਸ ਥਿਸ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਟੂ ਗਿਵ ਯੂ ਅ ਕੰਟੈਕਸਟ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਇਨ ਅ ਅ ਟੀਮ ਕਾਲ ਐਂਡ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਅ ਅ ਅ ਸੀਕ ਗਰੂਪ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ they were talking about heaven and hell and they're talking about how um heaven and hell exist but it's not the way that other faiths portray heaven and hell and it just something just didn't sit right because it was still very much like you do this and then you end up here or if you don't do this then you end up here and i thought having been somewhat in the in the therapy realm be it physical therapy you you kind of touch get a window into people's lives and you realize how dukhi people are your uh, eloquent articulation of, of concepts <laughs> i don't know that you know me very well um uh, eloquence and our articulation see are being articulate aren't necessarily my foray i just repeat a lot of stuff that i've learned over the last few years so heaven and hell being states of mind look here's the thing first and foremost we've got to understand that there's this oneness where there's this one divine mind and we are all extensions of this one divine mind this one divine mind we've we've reduced down to this petulant being that waits for you to trip up watches you trip up and then judges you and punishes you for tripping up we have reduced god down to our human judgments and god is not petulant god is pure love pure joy and we will talk about it this is known as the map of consciousness and it's based on scientific research god is all loving all knowing all benevolent so the idea that god is um going to put you through eternal damnation or any of those ideas is just a fallacy and it's that fallacy that idea of separation that creates the perception that we are either in heaven or in hell but if we sit and we read these texts we can see and we can start reading between the lines and see that they t- it's a play of the mind they're talking about the mind when guru nanak bacha said man jeete jag jeet that one line that one line when my brother i i've been reading that line since i was 11 years old didn't understand what that was really in fact since i was about 8 years old and didn't really understand what that line was until the age of 35 when i had this conversation with my brother i i was i was telling him that i couldn't do this life thing much longer i'd been depressed for 15 years at least 15 years i was diagnosed at 19 and i was telling him i can't do this life thing much longer and he spoke to me about gratitude about god about universal principles and he said the line man jeete jag jeet and something in this conversation something shifted and it was in that in that time with him that i i understood i i here's what happened the perception that i was in hell shifted to oh my god this 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 feeling of hell that i'm experiencing is experiencing is within me and as he was talking i started to feel a relief i started to feel a a peace and a faith and i started to get a glimpse of something more this oneness and over the last 6 years all i've done is work on this read about it study it teach it and i i truly can tell you that like bro nothing else has changed in my life apart from i've i've started to study and i've started to read this stuff and i've started to really absorb it but i experience the heaven that life has to offer does that mean i don't get challenged does that mean that challenges don't occur no because challenges are a part of our our journey they're a part of life that's how we grow when you're challenged you're you're being asked to draw something from within you that you haven't drawn upon before and so 
I experience this feeling of heaven no matter what I'm experiencing externally because it's within me. My, we all have this story going on. We've got a, this monkey mind, the Japanese like it's just do, 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 all day long. We have upwards of 60,000 thoughts a day, right? And so, and we're aware of only between 1,200 and 2,400 of them consciously until we, we get conscious. That goes into a whole nother realm of our thoughts are creating our reality, et cetera, et cetera. Like that goes into that. But we all have this story going on between our ears and behind our eyes. And we need to become aware of what that is because that conversation that's constantly occurring is either dredging up the past, worrying about the future, completely missing the now. And that was something actually before we hit record, we were talking about. And I was saying, no matter where you are, there's no point. Sorry if you can hear my dog. He can hear me talking now. He's like, I want to come upstairs. But we were talking about no matter where you are in your life, no matter what's going on in your life, you need to be present in that moment versus worrying about, thinking about what else should be or could be or or beating yourself up about anything, really. Maybe a couple of questions off the back of that. So can, can you flesh out what is what is heaven? So is it an experience or is it a place you experience, like heaven inside you? Can you mm-hmm. elaborate on what that experience is like or try okay. to put it into words? Let me, let me say this. Maybe this will help. God isn't a thing. God is a feeling. If I say the words fear, worry, and doubt, you see how that makes you feel. But if I say faith, love, oneness, connection, you see that makes you feel something else? God is all of it. God is both the negative end of the scale and the positive end of the scale. It's your perception that's determining which. Now, when I say God is a feeling, we, Guru Sahib talks about being emotionally detached from the external, like stop letting out there determine what's going on within you. Guru Sahib talks about being emotionally detached. And the reason I feel this is one of the reasons they were talking about it is because we are constantly experiencing an emotion. We're constantly feeling something. And so... That was one of the things I felt when I was sitting in the car with my brother at that time. It was, oh my God, I can change what I'm feeling by myself just by what I'm thinking. How does it feel? Or what is that? Is it the honey and all of that stuff? It's a feeling of pure assuredness, of pure oneness, of pure connectedness, of pure love and joy and knowing which is the complete opposite to what I was experiencing before which is the fear the worry the doubt that that space of feeling like life is happening to you I I lived that for a long time I'm the victim of my life I'm the victim of my story I'm the victim of my circumstances that right there is hell understanding then that you are a conscious being, you have access to God consciousness, which is accessible through feelings, through thoughts, feelings, and actions. That that feels like God. That feels like, should we hide God in the depths of the mountains, in the depths of the oceans, in the depths of this, in, in this? And each time the answer was no, don't, because they will find God. If you place God in a mountain or at the bottom of the sea eventually humans will find God so they said let's place God within the heart of the human and I think this is a parable for different faiths I just remember reading it around right and that God will will place God within the human will never look look. in there 
because the ego is in control, right? The ego is like, no, no, I, Joby, I'm there. Whatever there is, it's me. And I will take you to wherever. And sitting underneath the ego is the heart. And that heart is God. And we spend so long stuck here that we bypass what's going on in here, in the heart, which is where our resides. And so heaven and hell are states of mind. They're just which end of the polarity are you on? So Benny, um, this is related to a question that I asked during your last interview, which is around state of mind and coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I can think from personal experience, when I feel like my mind is in a particular state, uh, I might try and do Simran, I might try and read Bard, um, or I try and do things to switch out of that state. But mm -hmm. sometimes I feel really stuck. I have any words of wisdom around if you're in hell or if you're experiencing a, a kind of not such a good state to turn that around and change that energy and that vibration? Yeah. I, I think the first thing is, and I think I said this in our last conversation as well, stop trying. Um, when you try to do a thing, you are implying failure. You're saying that this may happen or it may not happen. That leads to the frustration when it doesn't happen. Mm. So there's no trying. You, We have multiple different tools available to us. We live on four levels of awareness, spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical. And so you, you, you go to the spiritual um, and you've done your part and you're still feeling that stuckness. That's almost like you've, you've set the stage there. You've, you've done that. Um, check in with your emotions. What are you actually feeling? What is the stuckness? What is that? Because we, we kind of say I am and we identify with the emotions. I am angry. I am stuck. I am frustrated. I am I'm guilty of this, too. But no, you're experiencing that in the moment because of something that precedes it, something that's lying underneath it. And so moments of presence, like where am I? Um, where's my head at? Where's my head been at the last few days? How did I get here? Because here's the thing. Where there are basic laws, universal principles, cause and effect is one of them. If we do this, if I open the cap and I pour this, the barney will come out, it'll spill everywhere, cause and effect. But we're not spending time thinking about, wait, out there is the effect stage. Forget everyone else, forget your families, forget your kids, forget all of that for a second. Just you as an individual, if you were to stop and say, I, I'm the creator of my reality, my circumstances begin within me. What has been happening in my life over the last 30 days, a week, however long you want, that means that I feel like this. What's happened from the last time I felt like this to now, what has been going on in between that time? And you will see that you being the cause have created the effect out there, the physical effect. Does that make sense? It began spiritually, it began in your thoughts, emotions. Um, so spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and then manifested in the physical. Let me give you an example, and then we'll, we'll come back to this. If, if you get a patient and they have um, knee pain or shoulder pain, you know it's indicative of a few things that have happened to precede that. It didn't, the pain is the end result, right? There's stuff that's happened before that. Same with life. The, the experiences that we're having, the effect stage of life, which is out there, the cause of that is within us. Go back to my story six and a half years ago. I was experiencing literal hell. My health was suffering. I'd had miscarriages, the hysterectomy, body was changing hated being in, in my own head like I couldn't keep my head quiet I didn't know what to do and honestly it took mighty power to not end my life on a daily basis suicidal ideation was a huge huge thing the, the hell is in our heads as opposed to the outside yeah I'm going to be really careful about how I say this or what I say if somebody is being challenged in an abusive relationship 
or anything along those lines, get the help you require, get in touch with, there are people that will support you and understand though, that there is a part of you that believes that that's all that you're worthy of. And when you want, and that's the hellish part of us, but the, the heaven that you can access if you take, it takes strength and courage to raise in levels of consciousness. That's what it takes to move out of darker spaces. So understand that if you're ever afflicted by anything, you're also working with a power that's greater than anything that you're afflicted by. So that's something I wanted to say. Um, and understand that you have control, you have autonomous control over yourself and what's going on in here, no matter what's going on out there. We are conditioned in the West to look at our circumstances and then try and arrange circumstances. Again, circumstances are the effect stage. The cause is here. Now, going back to what you were saying, that you feel like you might be doing all the right steps. Um, and then some people might not be doing all the right steps which is what is right steps as just steps to take, right? Stop and have a look at, wait, is there somewhere in your life where there's a lesson that requires learning that you might, you might be repeating the same thing over and over, but you're, you're missing the lesson. But also, what is your mental diet like? What is going in through your senses? Are you watching the news? Over the last two years, so here's why I talk about the media the way I do. Uh, and I'll talk about, I, I kind of touched on it when we last spoke. But, okay, worry and doubt versus knowing and trusting. Two opposite ends of the scale. They're both God, but they're two opposite ends of the scale. Tell me when the media have ever left you knowing and trusting in God and oneness. Or do they leave you with worry and doubt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my personal experience has always been worry and doubt and anxiety every time. Exactly, exactly. And why do they do that? Because they know how you work. They know how you and I function. They switch on the amygdala. You go to bed, people watch the news at nine o'clock at night and then they go to bed. That's on repeat. They wake up and they're stressed and worried and feeling doubtful. Why on earth are you inputting that into you? Sant Baba Janelle Singh, you said, this black box is going to cause so much trouble for people and we don't see it it's called programming for a reason someone i heard someone else say um television they're telling you television yeah television tell a vision television yeah or tell life tell lie vision like tell a lie as a vision like this tv is not your friend interesting i grew up doing i'm showing my age a bit but i grew up during the rocky era i don't know if you remember rocky three rocky yes III. i do i do <laughs> and uh, club of lang and, and drago and um i did i did a podcast interview which will probably come out after this at some point around when i met putin and um my impression of the russian people prior to meeting them was like drago out of rocky i thought they were all like that and i thought american people were all like very friendly and, and hospitable and, and good, good people, which there's going to be good and bad in every kind of, any kind of group. But when I went to the Olympics, my, my actual experience was the opposite. The Americans I met were very cold. Um, I had one coach that I went to congratulate and he just, I put my hand out and he just ignored me. He's standing right in front of me, just ignored me. But the Russians were so warm and welcoming. And I, it was, it was bizarre because I had been indoctrinated from watching all of this stuff on TV about the Russians are like this, they're communists, they're like this, and they're racist, and um, and America's like the home of the free and land of the brave, and and it's you know egalitarian if you're a good person and you're hardworking, you'll come out on top. But actually, in my small experience at the Olympics, the Russians were some of the warmest people I met. Not to say that Putin was, but just. <laughs> The, the Russian population that I met, um, the Russian people that I met were, were lovely. So it just reminded, what you're saying reminded me of that because I had no interactions with Russian people prior to the Olympics. So what formed my opinions of them? 
it, you know rocky movies which is a really bad way hollywood is a really bad way to for, form your your world view hollywood is called scripting for a reason they they are literally telling you what to think and how to think and when to think i read a meme the other day it makes me laugh um but we'd like to thank putin for ending the pandemic i'm going to call it that the pandemic and then i read another one the other day saying we'd like to thank will smith for ending the war and do you see you're being told what to think when to think how to think it it's a cycle who's in charge of your mind we need to look at why we are so so trusting of a media that helped to destroy us and our lands what are we taught in school we're taught in school that and this is part of the heaven and hell by the way why black and brown people suffer with mental illness the way we do because we grew up looking for somebody like us mean meanwhile being told that our lands required um our lands required invading because we required civilization we come from one of the richest lands in the world we have gurdwara and temples made of gold punjab had one of the highest gdps in the world hmm. and another point on that was I don't know if you've ever seen The Crown. It's a series on Netflix. No, nah, I can't watch it. Um, it just makes yeah. me angry. Yeah, <laughs> it I, just makes me angry. I don't know if it's a good thing to watch it. But um, I, you don't really see much insight into the royal family, but they, they kind of, they air all of the royal family's dirty laundry. You just realise that they went into countries, they colonialised countries with that promise of civilization, But actually... in terms of like monogamous relationships in terms of um cleansing uh, like hygiene in terms of communities getting along uh, murder rates um like theft rates within these small communities it was pretty is very much non-existent in a lot of these mm-hmm. places that they went into there were education systems in india they, there's an episode where they look at kenya and they say the highest education systems yeah. bro the highest education systems in one episode they were saying how we turn these anim- these animal like people into civilized people and and what did they do these people these communities didn't have they resolved their issues whatever their issues might be things that we we demonize and we we class as a as a demerit in someone's characteristics mm-hmm. the, these these uncivilized animalistic societies have a lot less than this at the same time at, you know, you had people like um you know prince edward colluding with the nazis and and people were doing all sorts of things and one of the relatives of the of the queen was um sectioned and they basically disowned them because they didn't want any association with anybody who had a mental health condition and and yet we are the uncivilized ones you think whole world is in the space that it's in because most of us are walk, sleep walking through life i was one of those people I was one of those people but then you only need to step back and say oh my god I see the patterns we lap it up we lap it up and we believe it we we believe it and we we and that means the more we believe it the more control they have the more control they have the less control you have the less you know that you're a liberated being and it means then that you're in the lower end of consciousness versus up here If you're in the lower end you're egocentric you're easily controlled. If you're up here who's going to control you? You've got God. Your control lies within you knowing who you are and if you don't know who you are you're easily controlled. You're easily controlled. What is the benefit of having control over a society and having them in that state of being in in kind of an internal hell? how does that benefit um who whoever might be benefit from that is it around like looking for suk in consumption and like hedonism is it um it's greed it's greed i feel like it's only present because we pay any attention to it I, and i think that that's why if we flip this 
switch and stop looking in that direction. Stop looking to the news for our information. Stop looking for Netflix to entertain us. And we start focusing on, wait, that makes me feel a certain way. This makes me feel a certain way. This makes me feel whole. This this changes everything. This is when you switch that heaven and hell thing within you. It's if we switch gears and talk about heaven now. So if you have somebody <laughs> who wants to experience that and they want to uh, have that bliss, they want to have experience that joy and contentment. And are there any tips, tricks, hacks to to experience more of heaven in your life, um, more of that state and less of the the hell part? Million percent, million percent. So getting out of that state of um, hell here's one of the first places you can begin and actually you can make this a quantum leap level practice too so I talk about the concept of how you think how you feel and how you act is determining what the universe is bringing back to you so if we're complaining and we're that's one thing I'll say stop complaining stop complaining about your life and get into cause mode like I cause the effect out there and so one of the first things you can do is gratitude gratitude changed my life it changed my entire life and it did it all in that moment I spoke about it in our last interview but what happened that day in the car when I told my brother I couldn't do this life thing much longer, he looked at me and said, when was the last time you said thank you for anything in your life? I had started to say it, but I, I'd never heard it like this. And he was like, you live in a beautiful home. You've got a great husband. And he just started to rhyme off all this stuff. And as he was talking about it, my, my feelings, my everything within me, my central nervous system, started to shift something started to change so when I came back from England I started to say thank you thank you for the house I keep complaining about cleaning thank you for the hot water I have to clean my house thank you for the clothes thank you for just thank you thank you thank you if I stubbed my toe I would say thank you for only let me stub my toe and not break my ankle right just just thank you just kept saying thank you that shifted so much but here's what wound up happening the more I said thank you the more because I as you think feel and act is what the universe returns to you well the more I said thank you the more the universe was delivering to me to say thank you the universe's answer to you is always yes so when you're complaining about your life which I spent a long time doing well, then I just wound up getting more and more to complain about because the universe's answer to you is always yes. So when you say I'm skint, I'm sad, I'm broke, I'm angry, the universe says, yes, my love, let me deliver more of those kind of experiences to you. Hmm. So, yeah, Ben, yeah. have you heard about the RAS reticular? I, I yeah. Can... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an NLP practitioner. OK, so, yeah, so I, was, I was reading up on that and I think I think that's definitely true because my, my mom just bought a Hyundai Ionic which is a, a car that I had never seen before but now I'm seeing loads of them on the road mm -hmm. so I, th I definitely have seen that in my own life that once something comes up on your radar your your brain picks up on it even though it was already there but you just weren't yeah. conscious of it and I feel like gratitude does that you, when you start finding good in your life then that good just gets amplified and you just find more and more reasons to be grateful. A million percent. And um, because what you focus on expands, what you focus on gets bigger. Here's the thing about the RAS. The RAS is always looking out for what's important to you and whether you're conscious of it or not. So I give this example quite a bit. You go to a, um, a packed room, a packed party, and you're going, you're having a conversation with someone and somebody at the opposite end of the room says your name. They're not talking to you, they're talking about you, but you're talking to somebody over here. But you've, you've heard them, you've heard them say your name and you've turned around. 
Nobody else has turned around, but you did because your name is important to you. And you weren't consciously waiting for somebody to say your name. Your subconscious mind picked it up. Mm. So the RAS is always looking for what's important. That's why I was, that's why I talk about, even with my clients, I talk about moments of making time to mop, moments of present, getting back to the present moment. Where was my mind? Was I worrying about something in the past? Was I worrying about something in the future? Or am I present? Am I here? And what are five things I can see, four things I can touch, two things that, do you know that, that kind of getting present in the moment? That is a really powerful understanding that you've got this thing, this filter in, in your brain that's looking for what you will program it with. Again, when, because it's your perception, your perception is determining your reality. So if the news, et cetera, is telling you to think about worryful thoughts, your RAS is on high alert and it's just looking for those things. It's looking for more and more proof of that. So, yeah. And in terms of gratitude is one tangible thing that people can do to shift their state from heaven to, from hell to heaven. Are there mm-hmm. any other examples of yeah. things that immediate kind of quick wins that people can utilize to shift their state? Breathing, first and foremost. Um, a lot of us are walking around with stale air in our lungs. Um, we don't have an active breathing process. And Guru Sahib talks about it, about it. Baba and Guru, like your the air is the Guru. And oftentimes we just breathe into the lower capacity of our lung, just the lower part of the lung versus breathe into the diaphragm, breathe into the lungs and bring the air, visualize the air coming up to your shoulders, right? And and take those deep breaths, actually get into, you don't have to wait until you feel crappy and sucky for you to do this. If you make a practice of doing this now, causing the effect, no matter what's going on, no matter what's been, no matter what's happened, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, If you begin this practice morning and evening of gratitude, breathing and doing some enlightening reading or learning, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a book, whether it's um, even a song, whether it's meditation, whatever it is, if you do something that is enriching for you, again, there's that dietary, the the sensory diet that I was talking about. What What are you taking in through your senses? eating better not eating so much junk I was somebody like I had coke in my fridge all the time and I would eat bars of chocolate for breakfast or cake for breakfast and then I'd wonder why I felt so crappy right so I was in this cycle of cravings of of eating crappy of feeling crappy so it there's no one real just one thing there are many different things. Journaling. Journaling is so powerful. So powerful. Peter Crone, if you haven't already, it's one of his last videos he did with, um, I think it's called the Two, Lad- Two Lads podcast. And he talks about, do you have one person in your life that you can, you can call up and say, I don't want any judgment. I don't want I don't want coaching. I don't want anything else. I just want to, I just, will you hold the space? Can I tell you this stuff? Can I tell you what's going on? The reason this is so powerful, and if you don't have that person, get a coach, get a mentor, get a therapist, or get a journal. And Nicole LaPera does a really good um, future journaling practice where if you're not in the habit of journaling, she actually helps you get into the habit of journaling uh, in a more conscious way present way but when we journal so here's the thing everything in the universe is energy everything whether it's this bottle whether it's this pen no matter what it is it's all energy depending on the the um way it's um depending on whether it's um vibrating fast or slow is dependent on whether it's a solid or a gas or a liquid right Everything in the universe is energy. That includes your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. They are also energy. Now, when we journal, so this energy is meant to be flowing to and through us. What happens is we it, we hold on to things, 
and we become um, attached to things and the energy becomes stagnant and stuck. It's not meant to, it's meant to flow constantly. So what we do when we journal or we talk to somebody is we're literally giving this formless energy form, whether it's in the form of writing or speaking, words, whatever else. But it's called the perpetual transmutation of energy. It's taking energy from one source and putting it into another. I promise you that's why, I promise you if you practice this, you'll start to feel lighter because you're no longer holding on to this stuck, stagnant energy, this dark energy a lot of the times, you're actually letting it go. So journaling is another way. Um, I used to be hesitant, or is it not even hesitant? I used to be resistant to do it because the ego mind doesn't actually want to do it. I would often light a candle in my simmer room and I would just light it and I would just look at it. I would just look at the flame and I'd notice my mind wander and I'd bring it back and I'd notice it wander. I actually started to really enjoy the process because I, I actually find it quite um, exhilarating and liberating to practice stilling the mind and bringing it back. Because you see, that is all this is. This is just a practice of stilling the mind. It's got this do, 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 all day long. And what you're feeling is the remnants of that. So if you can just bring yourself to stillness, you will feel so very different because you'll start to recognize that you are in control of what's going on in here. And one, one or two final more, actually, grounding. Take your shoes off, go walk on the grass, get those negative ions into you, throw those positive ions into the earth. There are reasons that we used to walk around barefoot as in our ancestral times, right? So there's that. There's also just being out in nature. Godrath, nature is the highest frequency available to you. So go access it. You'll never, it's funny, my husband and I were talking about this yesterday. He said he woke up yesterday with a bit of a headache. And, um, but we went out for a walk and he says, isn't it incredible how you can go out for a walk and just feel instantly better? Because you do, because you're doing the breathing and stuff as well. I have trees. I, I don't care who's watching. I will go hug a tree and I'll say thank you to it. So there's so many different things that we can do. It's just doing them. And if you haven't done the hugging a tree thing, I promise you, go do it. <laughs> go do it. It's, it's quite special. It's quite special. Trees, like they breathe out what we breathe in and we breathe out what they breathe in there's a there's a divine connection there and so that's what i mean like this whole process if if you're in that that those lower end emotions that's let your pain be your medicine guru sahib says it right so let your pain be your medicine because as rumi says the wound is the place that the light enters if you're in that space i promise you there's no other way but out and there's the light the light is already within you you've just got to do little things here and there now to start accessing it amazing but yeah i wanted to talk about um something someone shared with me so they, they a long time ago um we got a camp in punjab he started with such kind of a and he said where is god god is right here in front of us right like um there's a shabbat where it says heart right like so even closer to in your hands and uh, is is God so he's right there in front of you such kind of and God and then talks about the world planets we already have that here and then talks about different agars different life forms um countless life forms we already have that um so you he, he was saying how everything is here um mm -hmm. and heaven is here but you just got to have the eyes to see it um that my god my is right here my sahib is right here this shabd kamaya that you see him when you do kamaya of the shabd so it's just really interesting the different it, you know i think it's it's really interesting the different interpretations and different kind of um explanations of of such kind and heaven and hell and but what resonates with me most is that how can we expect to go to heaven 
when we have we're living in hell in this life and we think well, if i just do this one thing or if i just say this one thing then that's it i'll get to heaven it just feels is that really the case or or with hell i know there's some faiths that believe if you do this one thing that's it you're damned to to hell mm. and it's it's like well is that is that people is that god i definitely resonate with your explanation on heaven and hell its state of mind and it gives us some ownership accountability and power over control and so i really like that i really like the fact that we have a choice over what state we want to be in and where we want to be it's not somebody else is going to decide for us at the end it's it's our choice it's up to us to make that choice and and to make our lives reflect the choice that we want to lean towards yeah it's a moment by moment choice and guru sahib says sahib mera neetna va sada sada data like my my beautiful god is ever evolving ever new right and so you do not you do not have to be the same person we are not the same people we were when we started this podcast we you can choose something new and you will your lit we're shedding i heard this somewhere i don't know that the figures correct but i'm going to say it anyway 7% of our cells every single day that means that we're regenerating new cells and if we get present and in the now moment and we start these practices now or well, these new cells that we're generating you're reprogramming them and over time those cells will overtake the old programming sahib mera neetan va sada sada dada you do not have to stay here god is ever flowing ever new so there's that but there's also understanding patience there's this idea that oh i meditated once and that's it i should be chilling now i did a mala this morning i should be chilling now for the rest of my life you eat every single day you're hungry every single day you have a spiritual diet that you need to fulfill every single day and that's 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 not that's a non negotiable if you want to experience those higher levels of consciousness if i stop meditating or if i stop doing gratitude if i stop if i start watching netflix at night for i go to bed or i wake up and i watch watch netflix and i do that over and over i can guarantee you it won't take long before i'm back down a slippery path of visiting hell but if i keep this up and i might not do all the things every single day anymore and the thing is i don't need to and neither will you need to if you've programmed yourself often enough to know what your equilibrium is right now the equilibrium is off balance and so every single day i talk about it i talk about making time to date god we're constantly saying show me where you are show me that you're here show me my path show me how show me but we don't do anything to show up we don't do anything where we can meet god halfway jaran saran gur ek panda jaye chal sat gur kot panda aage hoye let hai but do we take the step for god to take hundreds of thousands towards you hmm. and so i truly see this this relationship with god it is is yours and it's mine it's individual to you and you can make it anything you want but god is accessible to you because god is all that is there's nothing else everything else is the illusion so you're worrying about is the illusion it all of that is the illusion and it's all forcing you to go up towards this oneness that has been trying to get your attention for as long as you've been here unconscious really interesting discussion and i think i think we could talk for hours benji um we could <laughs> part 3 <three. laughs> we need to do this more often we need to just schedule it in and and um <laughs> I, i really really appreciate your time i know these can be quite intense and and draining sometimes when you're 
talking on on a subject for a long period of time i know i know it's not necessarily the case with yourself because you're, you're so passionate about um this topic and consciousness but i i just want to say thank you for all that you do your time i know you've done save off for basics recently as well and just everything that you're putting out it's always it's always um refreshing anything you put out is always refreshing and uplifting so thank you for everything that you're doing I'm truly grateful and I love what you're putting out there I can't I'm, I'm, do you know what it is you you I what I love about what you put out there it isn't just a one tunnel view you have did you share lots of different ideas from different people that cause people to think differently so that's what's powerful and I think that that's why we connect the way we do because we're outside the box thinkers yeah and I think it opens up your mind when you listen to different people's perspectives on things it it makes you a better person I think because you you think you see things from a different lens and you see things that you otherwise may not have seen from your own narrow perspective um so yeah I really enjoy these conversations so thanks again for that but where can people connect with you how can they find out more about you uh you can connect with me on instagram at intuitive.knowledge you can email me at um at you can email me hello at intuitive-knowledge.com um and i have I, I and you can check out the website www.intuitive-knowledge.com i have a method that i i created it's called the simpler method and it's based on seven steps to you raising in conscious awareness spiritual intentional mind mastery physical love love being the language of the universe emotional awareness and routine the power of a routine all of these things Mm -hmm. thanks again that was all a download from god like that was just uh, you can't make it up like even if yeah you can't make it up because initially here let me tell you let me tell you about this super quickly and the connection with God. And when you can turn off the voice of your own mind, you'll start to hear that still silent voice that's been trying to get your attention. Suddenly it's not so still and silent because you've turned off your own uh, your own mind voice, if you like. But I create something called the SEMP diet, um, spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical. And I talked about that. And I remember going to bed one night, the power of your subconscious mind, I was like, do you know what, Guru Sahib, I would really like to make this simple. Like, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about the acronym. I was just like, I'd really like to make it simple. I woke up the next morning, God said, add I and, um, what was the other one? E, no, L for love. And I was like, oh my God, that makes it simple. And that night I'm sitting on my desk and I was like, I'd still like to make it simpler. And literally within seconds, God said, add R for routine. I was like, this is, yeah. So my point is there was a time that I used to look at people and think, they don't really hear that. They don't really, like, can that really happen? But no, it does. Because God is all there is. And God is all there is. Everything else is is the illusion. And God is forever communicating with you through songs, through other people, through billboards, through road signs, because it's all God. So if you allow yourself that expansive perspective, how can you not see it? And that's why I find it enthralling. And I find it absolutely exhilarating to live this life where it's a constant experiment with God. Let's let's go, let's see, let's see what we're gonna create today it's a gift amazing okay thank you so much thank you very much